Going back empty? Say hi to Sarah. RCMP evidence room, Sergeant Frobisher. How's your leg? Who is this? Oh, you haven't forgotten. Geiger. Geiger. They're on a scow, not a cruise ship. When I take you across that border, immigration finds out I lose my boat. Where do you want to go? As far as this will take me. And this. makes the border between Canada and the United States the longest undefended border in the world. So that since their formation, our two countries have found a peaceful way to coexist. Except for the War of 1812, where your country invaded ours and we sent you packing, but that's hardly worth mentioning. Now, I think I'll open the floor to questions. Yes? Do you have to undo all your buttons to go to the toilet? No. Anyone else? Yes? How many do you have to undo? Just enough to get your trousers undone. Yes. Do they have toilets in Canada? Yes, we do. Anyone else? Anyone else at all? Any other questions at all? When was the last time you were home? It's been far too long. just disappeared. His car was still in the garage. He hadn't taken anything from his apartment. I checked all the buses and trains. Finally, someone from the docks remembered seeing him getting on a barge that was headed here. I still can't believe that he'd just leave without saying something. I've been looking for a week. I can't find him, Fraser. I was hoping maybe he called you. No, I'm sorry. I just knew how close he and your father were. They went back a long way. I want to stay here and keep looking, but my job, they won't give me any more time, and if I lose it, well, it's just me and Patty now, you know. I was sorry to hear about um, Bruce. Bruce. It's okay, it was my fault. I just married the wrong man. I was in love with someone else. Oh, you... I, I... You, you don't mean... No, Fraser, it wasn't you. Oh, good. 
No, I don't mean good. I mean, I mean, I, I... <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. You're just like my father. You could track a man 500 miles over sheer ice, but put either of you the arm's length of a woman and you're completely lost. I'll put you behind the desk and you die. That's what was happening to him. I don't know. I don't know what's happened, but... I don't want to lose him, Fraser. I can't. Will you help me? Will you find him? I'll do everything I can. I haven't seen you in over 10 years, but somehow I knew if there was one person in the world I could count on. It was you. Someone's in there. Oh, hey, did you see the tie up at the border? What's going on? I thought it was Officer. Can I have the key? I wouldn't go in there. It's a real mess. And you think this is the man who stole your cat? Paul Marks on his cardigan. Yes, that's very conclusive. Um, you know, it's going to be a little difficult for me to break away from the case that I'm currently working on, but if you'd like to call back and ask for extension 312, Detectives Huey or Gardena would be glad to help you. Yes, they've been uh, especially signed to handle all animal-related offenses. No, no, ma'am. Pleasure's all mine. How's it going? I need your help, Ray. Does it involve domestic animals? Not that I'm aware. Then I'm your man. It's a personal matter. Violent crimes, Detective Gardena. Cat, ma'am. Seven freighters came in from northern Ontario last week, none carrying passengers. You still think your Mountie friend came in on one of these? Seems likely. Did anything come in from Sault Ste. Marie? Two. The Lady of the Lake and a garbage scow called the Bombay Vaughn. We'll try the scow. There are 1,700 places to drive across the border between Canada and the U.S. Why would anyone in their right mind travel by scow? I don't know, Ray. I don't know. Sorry. You're sure? I'm sure. He was my father's best friend. If he's in some kind of trouble, I... I'm sure he'd call your dad. Well, I'm sure he would if he was alive. But since he's not, he probably doesn't know who to trust. It's never an easy question. Oh, by the way, who did you know in the force? What? Your watch. RCMP field issue, circa 1950. Spring wound, consecutively numbered. Civilians couldn't buy them. Only a few still own them. This was my father's. Want to show me yours? You really his friend? I am. Some of the men billet over at the St. John Hotel. Try there. Thank you, kindly. Yeah, you're a real prince, Popeye. Yeah, I was thinking of going to Maui, but now that I've seen this place, I'm reconsidering. Excuse me, this man, is he registered here? Never seen him. Carney, one bag, no tip, room 202. You sure? I mean, we live here 24 hours of the day. I sleep here, I eat here. I know every face that comes in here. So is he in? I have no idea. So what's this guy like? What do you mean? I mean, if this guy's unhinged, I don't want to knock on the door and be met by a bullet. Oh, it's OK. He knows we're coming. How could he? wind. I'll uh, wait for you downstairs. Julie asked me to find you. Yeah. I'll send her a postcard. She's worried. Nothing will happen to her if she just stays away from me. I don't think she's worried for herself. I'm fine. 
Who is it? You're waiting for somebody, or you wouldn't have that. So what are you going to do, protect me? I'd do whatever I could. Look, I'm Buck Frobisher, you little pissant. I've taken more men down than you've ever met. The day I take help from a boy like you, the day I'll put this to my own head. Want to do something for me? I'm out of beer. I have them send it up. February 13th. Ten years ago, I would never have walked into something like this. A bear trap so poorly camouflaged a child would have seen it. But I didn't. I pried it open and got my leg out. But there was no way I could make it back. I was prepared to die out here. And to be honest, felt I deserved it. A man gets too old for a job, he should know it. And stop. But then Buck found me. I don't know how. No one knew where I was going, but he found me and carried me back. Three days over terrain a mule couldn't navigate, laughing his ass off the entire way. Riding like that, completely helpless, slung over Buck's shoulder and staring down his back, I came to understand two things. One, at a certain point in life, a man's hips spread, and there's nothing you can do about it. And two, that's a very easy way to define friendship. A friend is someone who won't stop until he finds you and brings you home. I think I know who's after the old man. I came over the wire, so as usual, I decided to drop my life and bring it on over. I appreciate it, Ray. You know, this guy must be 60 years old. It doesn't look that dangerous to me. In 1978, Harold Geiger held up a bank in southern Michigan. A guard tried to stop him. He shot the guard and two other employees. The police and the FBI pursued him across five states. Before he crossed into Canada, he killed two FBI men, a state trooper, and a highway patrol officer. Once across the border, he broke through a massive dragnet, killing a local officer, two provincial police officers, and two members of the RCMP's emergency response team. In short, he killed every cop that got close to him, except one, Buck Frobisher. Frobisher tracked him up the White Horse, caught up with him on a railroad bridge. A struggle ensued. Geiger went over the edge, and at the last second, Frobisher caught him by the arm. Dangling there 200 feet above the gorge, Geiger reached into his belt, pulled out a hunting knife and jabbed a hilt deep in Frobisher's leg. Still, Sergeant Frobisher managed to pull him up, cuff him, and take him in. And this guy's coming here to my city? I believe so, yes. God, I hate tourists. So he is coming. A few hours ago, they found the body of a Border Patrol officer in a service station restroom. They sealed the bridge immediately, but they can't be sure he didn't make it across. He made it. I came to offer you... My friend, Detective Vecchio, is waiting downstairs. He's willing to place you under protective custody until Geiger's apprehended. At long, eh? <clears throat> they must have quite the budget. The FBI's been notified, and the state troopers are watching the road, so as soon as they're sure that he's... What, that he's coming after me? They want proof? Well, we show them this. Show them my leg. 17 years ago, I didn't have to take these, you know, the walk on them. That's what it cost me to bring him in. He's been on the road for a week now. How many cops has he killed? Two that we know of. Yeah, well, right there. that brings his total up to 12. Your friend got 12 more cops he's willing to lose. I put Geiger away. 
He's not gonna stop until he finds me and does the same. So what do you plan to do, keep running? Hey, look. You came here, you warned me, I appreciate it. But what I do or where I'm going is none of your damn business. You know, I was reading my father's diary. It's the day that you pulled him off the ice pack. I was 30 years old then. So what? I look like I'm 30. I look like I'm 40. <laughs> I was, I was when your father and I thought we were immortal. Boy, were we wrong. <laughs> Look what happened to him. Look what happened to me. You were still the same man who brought in Geiger when nobody else could. I was the man I used to be. Right now, I'm just a guy who sits behind a desk. No, I'm a guy who's running for his life. He's ashamed of what he's become. No, you're not. You're Buck Frobisher. And you know exactly who you are. The only question is, how long can you keep running from that? you need money or a plane ticket? No, I'm moving on tonight. Let's send you a postcard. He didn't go for it, did he? So what do you want to do? Nothing. There's nothing we can do for him. Can you drive me home? I have to be at work early tomorrow. Sure. Son, we have a villain to catch. You ran away, but you brought your dress uniform with you? No, I rented it. If we don't catch him by Tuesday, I have to pay extra. Ready? Ready. Taxi? <laughs> Okay. So where do we start? Well, what I know of the south side, everything tells me that's where he's headed. Geiger, Harold. Ooh, he's a nasty one. You need known accomplices, girlfriends, cellmates, anyone in the city you might try to shack up with. Local boys, here we go. Ho, Walter, armed robbery, multiple counts, currently on parole. Traeger, James, armed robbery, manslaughter, currently on parole. Welker, George, murder one, attempted murder, mayhem, armed robbery, assault with a deadly weapon. On parole. Escaped and at large. I'm printing out last knowns, but the parole office could have more current addresses. I'll call when I get them. Thank you kindly, Lane. You're a gem, Lane. Come on, boys, let's move. We appreciate your thoughtfulness, Miss. Now there's a country that knows what to export. Absolutely. Okay. Now this is going to take some teamwork, so listen up. Here's how it's going to be. I go to the front door, you stay in the car. 
I go into the bar, you stay in the car. I question the locals of the whereabouts of one Walter Ho, you stay in the car. When I get back here, where do I find you guys? In the car. Exactly. Let's go. Right. Oh, Thief, when I come back, I expect to find you in the car. Oh, uh, before we go in, there's something I should tell you. Hey, hey, shut long time on see. Get out of here, Vecchio. Get the hell out of my bar. I don't need any more trouble. Ah, come on, Chuck, you worry too much. I just got this place put back together. You know how much it costs? I can't even get insurance anymore because of you. Someone get this goop out of here. Look, Chuck, I'm just looking for a little bit. Chicago PD, pal, don't make me use my gun. That's it? That's my gun? Don't make me use it. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. Could I have one quick word? Anybody carrying illegal firearms, please place them on the bar. You're under arrest. That's very good. Now place them on the bar. You see, I've been here before, and what I've found is that this is... Oh, uh, right, local custom. All right, we're prepared to overlook the firearms infractions. It being hunting season and all. No, no, sir, you keep that. All we want is information on the whereabouts of one Walter Ho. You want to know where Walter Ho is? You see, it's usually at this point that they'll start shooting, so if I might suggest that we just take cover behind that small wall there. Vincent, tell me where your father is. 956 Dearness Street. Thank you, young man. Get that. <clears throat> Very nice people, these Americans. You hear these stories. I'm telling you, this is a waste of time. There's no way he gave you the right address. I mean, this is the guy's father. You're right. Could be a trap now. We're going ready for trouble. All right, nobody move. Get your hands on the table. Get those daubers where I can see them. You, Pop, hands in the air. Oh, sorry. Did anybody check this guy's birthday before we started out on this manhunt? Walter Ho was 91 years old. Wouldn't you say this trail's a tad cold? He might have worked with Geiger early in his career. Early in his career? This guy started out with the James Gang. All right, where to next? 907 Mill Street Road. I've run into this guy before. We're not going to find him in any bingo parlor. Trigger James, born February 13, 1937, died November 2nd, 1993. OK, I'll get the shovel. You handle the interrogation. That man was several years younger than me. You know, I always used to think that I'd want to see my enemies in their graves before I died. It's a strange feeling. Now this actually happened. All right, George Welker. We have no whereabouts on him. He escaped from Pelican Bay eight months ago. Maybe the FBI has a lead. I think we've covered enough ground for today. We will find him. We always do. Think you can find our way home? I'm here 24 hours a day. There's a guy behind the desk. Ah! <laughs> 
man's been working out. Stay here. Nobody gets on this floor. How is he? We got the bleeding stuff right away. It looks like he's out of danger. About to get him with a knife? Very deep. Doctors seem to know what they're doing. Damn it. You in there? Recovery. As soon as they know he's okay, they'll move him. You know, I can't believe it. I mean, it's like, Frazier, he was invincible. I mean... Yeah. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. DOA. Night walk. Well, you got the room to yourself. Are you really a Mountie? Yes, ma'am. You know, I got a nephew in Canada. His name is Gerald Simpson. You know him? Yes. Really? <clears throat> you know, I was, um, you're not supposed to be in here yet. Uh, yeah, I know that. There's a cop outside. Would you like to report me? Thank you very much. How's it going? They tried to cut off my boots. No. Right up the side. I wouldn't let them. Oh, I don't blame you. Lose a leg, sure, but a good pair of boots isn't easy to replace. Does it hurt? Yes, Ray. Would you like a little more fluid? No, thanks. How's Deef? Oh, I rented him rent tin tin. He's thrilled. <laughs> thanks. Is Sergeant Frobisher out there? Yeah, would you like me to send him in? Please. Oh, I'm gonna, um, go down to the store. Do you want anything? Like what? Oh, I don't know. I was thinking maybe the Yukon Gazette or a toboggan today. <laughs> no, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> How are you doing? I wanted you to know it wasn't your fault. How do you figure that? Well, he surprised me, too. I walked right into it. Well, as I recall, you kicked your way into it. <laughs> and you won't be doing that again too soon. No, it doesn't look like it. Well, it'll get well if you stay off it. But that's the hard part. You know, when it happened to me, I... I told myself, you get back up and get out there, they're gonna put you behind a desk. <laughs> so... Oh, I can't imagine that. I'm sorry. Well, there are worse places. We visited one yesterday. I think, um, I think you should take up Ray's offer. Protective custody, yeah. Uh, be the smart thing to do. Well, you take it easy. Get some rest. Yeah, that'd be the smart thing to do. You remember that wallet that you stitched for your father when you were just a little kid? He showed you that? But he used it until it started to fall apart, and he used it even after then. When I brought him out that time, it must have fallen out of his pocket and got lost. When he got out of the hospital, the first thing he did was go back up there to try to find it. Did he? Yeah.
You make it? He threw himself down an elevator shaft. He made it. Where's Buck? Ray, could you... Do I have to? Please. Where the hell did Frobisher go? He went after Geiger. And where are you going? Get my uniform. And then what? Then we go after Frobisher. Oh, yeah, this makes sense. We got half the police department after this guy, but is he gonna worry about that? No, he's got two limping mounties on his tail. Oh. Stand back, son. There's a villain on the loose. some help. Not again. Slow down a little. Stop. What, you see another bent twig? No, it's a gum wrapper. There appears to be something inside. Uh, of course there is. Disease. Someone had it in their mouth. Now, don't be opening that in my car. Dagger gave up smoking in prison using nicotine gum. Oh, well, that's good. God forbid he should have any bad habits. Oh, no, you're tasting things again? Oh, that is the grossest thing that I've ever seen. It's nicotine, all right. I see it. What, more gum? No, a red uniform. Did you find the gum? Yes. He's in there, and he's got company. How many? Five heavily armed. That's it. We call in the tactical team. You call in anybody you want. I'm going in there myself. You think that's a wise idea? There's no discussion here, Buck. Look, one week ago, that man in there stole my self-respect. At least I let him steal it. Now I want him to know I'm taking it back now. I'm going in alone. I understand. You understand? Let me suggest another interpretation to you. That is the stupidest reason I've ever heard in all my life. All right. I won't be long. Oh, one thing. If we should happen to feel that he's also stolen something from us... Well, you come too. Good. This has gone far enough. Okay, let me point something out to you that your sharp, mounty eyes may have missed. You see those windows up there? There are men in those windows with sniper scopes and high-powered rifles. Do you see any cover between here and there? No, which means there's no way to get from here to there without being seen or killed. He's absolutely right. Which is a shame, because if there was, I'd be the first to say, let's do it. Hmm. Unless... I've never been so humiliated in all my life. Would you hold the lantern a little higher, Ray? If we bump the sides, we'll have to return the canoe scuffed. Do you have any idea what's in this water? I would suspect a high percentage of ammonia, phosphorus, and cyanide. Wrong. Rats. Rats this big. You know what they're doing? They're laughing at us. I'm in a canoe with two wounded mounties, and I'm being humiliated by rats. I think we're getting close. It's been seven hours, Harold. He's not coming. He's coming. I think I have a trail of clues for him that even a blind man can follow. Yeah, and he'll bring the whole damn Chicago ED. I know him. He will come alone. You see any squad cars? I want to hear about it before they get here.
take these? Well, I try to stay away from non-prescription medicines, Ray. It's aspirin. Still, it has side effects. Just take them. All right, all right. I'll take a couple of those. OK. Now, the way I see it is, I'm the only one with a gun, right? Right. So let's take them one at a time. Excuse me. <laughs> Good plan. Let's split up.
see you again. I'll be waiting. You got a chance shooting. Yeah. Where you stay out that night now? I'll do that. Did you call Julie? Yeah, she's gonna pick me up at the airport. You know about her and Bruce. Yeah, I was sorry to hear that. Uh, that happens. She was in love with someone else. So she said. You know the fellow? Yeah. Nice guy. Kind of guy I'd never let a friend down. Sounds like a good man. Yeah. Goodbye, friend. Goodbye. Taxi. Can I offer you a ride? Absolutely. Ready? Let's go, son. We've got a plane to catch. But you're only going one way 